welcome to part 61 in my build log series of the Trumpeter 1 to 200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I am carrying on with my work on the officers' quarters. So I'm going to be adding the vents, uh, I'll probably add the LEDs, um, and I will start adding the internal structures of the officers' quarters as well. I doubt I'll get on to the internal fixtures and fittings, beds, wardrobes, yada yada yada, um, and I doubt I'll get round to actually wiring up the LEDs, uh, but we'll see. I haven't filmed it yet, so we'll see where I get to and we'll see how long the video is. So, without any further ado, let's crack on. So in this time lapse, I am adding the photo etch covers onto the vents which were uh, situated all around the funnels. Um, you'll notice that before I actually add the photo etch, I have painted the area underneath in black. Uh, and what that does is it just exaggerates the uh, the grating on the vents that little bit more and makes it look like there is a, a cavity under there rather than you know a sheet of plastic um, it tends to just make the vents look that little bit more real and a little bit more dirty as well right i'm just going to start gluing down some of the uh bits of apparatus on the top of the officer's quarters so i'll start off with the main or large ventilators
Right, I need to make one of these skylights for the uh, top of the officers' quarters. These are the skylights that uh, let light into the Marconi room. Uh, and there's two of them in total. I've already done one. And if I'm honest, I didn't do a very good job of it. But we'll do the second one on camera. And we'll see if we can uh, improve. So first of all, we cut out these this piece, which is the sides, and these just get bent into shape. There we go. Now, this is fiddly, but again, as always, where you can, you know, give yourself a helping hand. Instead of holding all of this in place, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it into the right shape and then restrain the part with bits of blue tack. Make sure everything's in the right orientation and such. Okay, and now get some glue, put it on the joint. And there we go. So that's the first little bit done. Now we need to get the uh, roof section in place. So we'll cut that out. But before we do the roof, I'm going to add the, these. These are sort of glass panes that sit in the roof. I'm going to add those first because it seems sensible to add them while the roof is sort of restrained. Now, there's two options here. You can either have these panes open with this little piece of metal here, like a sort of, uh, like shutters almost. I'm not, because if I'm honest, I think that's just creates an unnecessary level of delicacy, which undoubtedly will just sustain damage at some point and therefore look less good. So I'm not gonna do that. Again, I shall help myself out as much as possible, so I've not cut the uh, window surround out. I've only cut the panes out, and what I'll do, get a little bit of glue. Put it on the top edge. them in place. There we go. Nice and easy. And then the last little bit. Just to cut this out. Stop it. Okay. We're going to cut that out, bend it a touch, and then put it down onto this frame. So this frame's dried now. I will use a little bit of glue just to sort of hold it in place. Sorry, not a bit of glue, a little bit of blue tack just to, just to sort of hold it in place while I work so it's not flopping around. Uh, these have dried now. So I'm just going to bend these a touch. What I'm going to do is I'll use this needle file that has a triangular dimension to it, just to put the bend there we go, that's nice I'm just going to test fit this first Ooh, could do a little bit more of a bend
That's nice. Adding a bit of glue to the sides and I'll dump this piece down on top and I'm going to add a bit more glue on the inside just to sort of belt and braces so to speak. Okay. Squirt of kicker. Lovely job. There we go. Simple. And actually, that is a much better result than the previous one I did. But there we go, we live and learn. Right, I'm just adding the skid lights. So that's these pieces right at the bottom of the officer's quarters. Um, and these are sort of skylights that actually went into interior cabins uh, on A deck beneath. Um, so I'm not intending on lighting them, and for that reason I haven't actually drilled any holes. Instead, what I'm just doing is I'm fitting the skid lights onto the deck, uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the interior of the, uh, the hole, essentially where the glass would be, uh, black. And that will give the appearance of something behind, but of course I won't have to light it. Um, so these are the KA skid lights, and I have to say I think they're a bit big, if I'm honest. In scale terms, that is bigger than a person, and I feel like that's a large light. Um, but it's the best alternative I have, so I'm going ahead and using them. Uh, but interested to know other people's thoughts and what they think on the size of these, because to me, they do look a bit big. So this is the last one I'm going to do at normal speed for the video. Uh, but as always, I'm just putting a little bit of glue and then using some blue tack just to position the piece. And that's it. Right, just doing some of the officer's quarters windows now. And I've got to say, absolutely love them. Um, sorry, a bit of blue tack stuck onto the officer's quarters. Right. What I really like about the way that these have been done, what I'll do is I'll get a piece of white paper so you can actually see what I'm talking about is that the windows come with pieces, with hinges almost. So if you if you see, I'll cut one out and then we'll hold it up so that you can see. I'll cut it out on the board so I don't bend it. You can see that the window has a large piece here which can fold in and a small piece that can fold in. And this means you can actually have your windows however you want them. You could have a few of them open if you want. So that in a breeze. Um, but it's really cool because what it actually does is it it really gives the appearance of quite a bulky window frame, which these were. So when I fold them over, you get a genuine sort of 3D effect. Even in this scale, you can see that these windows were, were could be opened, you know, which really does give a nice bit of depth to the effect. So I'll just show me gluing in one. I mean, you've seen me gluing in windows uh, pretty much non-stop since this build log began, but nonetheless, we'll do one or two. So as always, a little bit of glue, not much, because bear in mind, these aren't really bearing any kind of load. They're just sitting there. A little bit of glue around the frame Lovely. Then get a bit of blue tech. Don't know why I'm doing a Yorkshire accent. A bit of blue tech. And just manoeuvre it into the aperture. There we 
で I just use something that won't stick to the glue, in this case the butt end of a craft knife, just to sort of press the thing to make sure it's in. And there you go, it's as simple as that. Really nice windows though, I like these. So we're now at a point where we've got most of the windows in, not all, but most. Uh, and I've also now got a lot of the ventilation ducts and stuff on top. Uh, and I have to say, the, um, the approach I took to spray paint the vents black first, and then go over with white, um, has had some really unexpected, but or, or rather unintended, but simultaneously very nice effects. Because of course, what happens is the black gets everywhere. And then when you paint the white, the white gets most places, but it sort of doesn't get into the nooks and crannies. You know, if you look at it here, the inside bits of that motor, just right there, and the inside bits of that sort of bracketry are a little bit darker. And it gives that impression of shadow, and it gives that impression of dust buildup, which is absolutely brilliant. It's exactly what you want. Uh, you can see it again here, you know, right in the nooks and crannies, they're just that little shade darker. Um, and it, it really does just add to the realism. Now, I would say at the moment, there's still a bit too much white here for me. It still looks a little bit too pristine. So I am going to sort of dampen it down a bit and probably put a bit of black wash in places and stuff like that. But firstly, I think the dome will help to lift the colour a bit. Um, and also, of course, the funnels and other such things that go on later. Um, but for now, I am really happy with it. Just these windows to go and then we'll be getting on to the lights. In this clip I am just connecting the backing and the front of the clock face from the gymnasium together. Um, these are both part of the Woody's Model Works set, uh, which I will show in more detail in a separate episode. Um, in terms of colouring here, I'm tending to work off Titanic Honor and Glory for the colours because they seem to be pretty spot on with most things. Um, and I'll show a close up of this in just a second. And there we go. Doesn't it look fantastic? Um, top marks to Woody's model works here. This is really, really high quality stuff. Now in preparation of adding lighting, I'm just going to add some foil to the roof section of the officers' quarters, and um, I will extend this further back over the, um, the gymnasium and the grand staircase as well. Uh, the reason for this is because foil stops light bleed, um, and this is particularly prominent uh, when you have LEDs mounted in the walls, which of course I'm using for the deck light, um, the light is actually able to shine through the plastic. Um, so having a physical barrier like foil uh, is really effective here, completely stops any light dead. So as you can see, I've now added foil for light proofing purposes. Uh, and I've also just written on where the different officers' cabins were. And you can see how this relates to the windows outside. So, you know, for example, you've got first officer, Murdoch, here, two windows, second officer, third officer, so on. On the other side, you've got a captain's sitting room, captain's bedroom, captain's bathroom, fourth officer, officer smoking room, and so on. And the reason I've done this is it helps me to sort of work out which windows I want to have lit and which ones I don't. Um, and as I've said before, I don't want many, but I do want a couple. So I think it would be logical to have the smoking room lit, 
And that's actually fairly helpful because there is, as you can see, there's a deck light there. So inevitably there will be a little bit of light in this room anyway. So if I can light these two windows, that would be nice. Uh, and I might light an other cabin, possibly first officer again, because there's a deck light there. So it just is a bit more convenient. That area is probably going to have a reasonable amount of light in it anyway. Um, the question, of course, is what am I going to do with the rest of the space? Um, I don't think it works just to sort of black out the windows and leave it at that, because I think these windows are too big and too visible on the model to get away with that. I think that will look a wee bit odd. So I went around and, I'm, and I'm, I've asked around on various different groups and um, I had quite a few different uh, ideas. One of the questions I asked was, does anyone have an idea what sort of curtains might have been hung in the windows? And I got a few people suggesting it might have been floral colour. So I have printed out a few of those and I'll probably put those in some windows. Um, and then the best idea that I had came uh, for, for other things to do came from a person called Laurent Finkel, who has helped me out before. Um, and he's done a very good build himself. Um, and as I say, he's helped me out before, particularly with things like the um, extended ceilings and the lounge and the smoking rooms. Uh, and he suggested putting, um, making a sort of light proof box for each cabin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some black plastic and I'm going to put the walls in here, but then I'm going to light proof them. So this hopefully will give the appearance of depth. It'll make it look like there is a cabin there. But it'll also give the appearance that equally it's not lit, you can't see into it. But it it, just, it gets over having that sort of black wall in front of the window, which I do think looks a little bit... It just doesn't quite give the effect you want, you know. At least with this, you'll have a fair bit of distance behind the window, so you'll get the impression of depth within the room. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm after. So, I shall crack on with that now. Before that, however, I'm just going to add my LEDs in, because... The wiring for these will need to go above the walls that I add um, to keep them as out of the way as possible because of course these windows are big enough that you would be able to see the wires through them. So I do need to do something to make sure that they are invisible from outside the model. So I'm just doing the back wall here for what's going to become this section along here. Uh, and because I'm actually adding detail in the smoking room, uh, I need to have some panelling on the back of the wall. So what I've done is I've cut out a section of panelling and I'm just going to glue that in place now. So that's going to go on like that. I'm just adding some glazing into the windows, so I'm using the same very thin sheet of plastic that I've used in the past. You'll notice the two windows though haven't been done, and that's because one is a toilet and the other is a bathroom, both of which would have had frosted windows rather than the clear windows that I've put in all the other cabins. So what I've got is just a bit of plastic which I have roughed up with a very, very fine sandpaper. I think it was uh, 1,000 grits, so wet and dry sandpaper. Um, and we'll just put that over the windows. Um, it is a tiny little detail, but as with all these tiny little details, these are the things that I think that really sort of make the model pop a bit, you know, make, make things stand out. So um, these will go in the bathroom and the toilet windows there, and then we will carry on. Now what I'm doing here is I'm building up the internal structure of the officers' quarters. So these are what will become the walls of the light-proof boxes that Lauren Finkel had suggested to me. Um, now this is actually a bit tricky to do because um, CA glue doesn't seem to stick very well to foil. 
um, I'm assuming because foil is so smooth it just can't quite grab a hold of it very well. So it's fine once you've got a few pieces in because you can glue it onto the walls at the side of the officer's quarters but um, getting that long thin piece in to start with with only one glued surface was actually a bit tricky. So as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just building up these sort of light proof boxes in the officer's quarters just made of black plastic nothing special uh, but the idea is that when you look through the windows you get the depth of a room without any of the necessity for detail in the room and that's exactly what I'm getting when I look through these windows you get more perspective than you would if that black plastic was right up against the window but you can tell the room's not lit so it gives a good context as to why there's no furniture there. Uh, the reason I've paused is that the next uh, wall I need to do is the one that borders onto the smoking room, which of course I am going to decorate. So I need to add some uh, wooden panelling. Uh, not this stuff, this is the uh, stuff for the grand staircase, which I'll be doing in a bit. I did have some cut out before. Anyway, I seem to have misplaced it. Anyway, so I need to get some white wooden panelling on this uh, wall here. You can see that I've already fitted it onto this one. Uh, and then what we'll do is we will stick these remaining walls in place and we should end up with quite a nice effect. So here we are, just testing out the light box theory thing. Um, <laughs> and you can see that it is actually working quite well. Um, obviously we've got our deck light here. Uh, and the deck light's ambience is sort of also shining back out into the room, which is illuminating the two windows that I wanted. That's the officer's smoking room, but you'll see that the next door is pitch black, uh, and indeed on the other side, pitch black. So that's exactly what I'm after, and actually it's worked a hell of a lot better than I thought it was going to. What I need to do now is I need to fill any gaps in my black plastic with this stuff. And this is uh, what I've been using for pretty much all of my light blocking. It's a fabric picked. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that now. So here we are. And all I'm going to do is just on the bits that need it, I'm going to apply this fabric paint. And you see, it's funny stuff. It is just quite literally sort of black goo. Um, I'm applying this almost the same way you would apply a bead of silicon, you know, on a, on a kitchen worktop or a bathroom. To sort of make a, a chamfer against the side wall. And that goes all the way along to the end, and that will just block any light out. Now, another thing, I'll just show you the bead, actually. There you are. You can't really see it because it's black, but um, it is there, I promise. Um, now, the other thing that I'm sure will have occurred to some of you is that what I was saying before about this light here, working as a deck light, but also shining back into the smoking room and therefore illuminating these two windows, that one there and that one there. Now, that's, good, that's great, and I can use it to my advantage in this room because I want it lit. But what about the rooms which also have deck lights, like this one, that I don't want lit? How am I going to stop that light shining back and filling these rooms and making it very obvious that there's nothing there? Well, I'm going to use this paint again. Uh, and this will look very crude. And that's because it is. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover the whole LED in this paint. So no light can escape from that covering and all the light just has to shine out. Any light that goes that way will get absorbed by the black paint and will be invisible. You'll be able to see it. So as I say, you would be forgiven for thinking this is very crude because it is very crude, but it works. So it don't really matter. Just got one more light on this side to do. Right, lovely.
So these time lapses here are just showing me doing the exact same thing on the other side of the officer's quarters. Note that I have sort of tied out the LED wires to make these things a bit easier to manage. And this seems like an appropriate place to end really. Uh, in the next episode I will get the lights working and I will also add any interiors that I intend to do and I'll also hopefully finish off the gymnasium and the forward part of the grand staircase. Um, but as you can appreciate that's quite a lot more work so it'll come in the next episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been quite a good process and I'm really looking forward to having the officer's quarters finished. Uh, mainly because it will mean I don't have to fiddle around with those dastardly small LEDs anymore. Uh, which will be a welcome relief for sure. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, whatever, you pop them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.